Graphic Specialist. Today we're going to learn about how to control your LED sign using ITV, our advanced new software for LED signs. For the purpose of today's exercise, we're going to be a Popeye's fried chicken restaurant so that we can learn more about how to control the sign every day and upload new text items and new bullet point animated text items whenever we need. So let's get started. Before we begin working in ITV, we'll need to make sure that your Bluetooth USB antenna is plugged in right here in the front of your PC. You also need to make sure that these two small power lights on the front here are on and activating. These represent the power signal and the connection. Here we have it. This is our ITV software interface. And you'll notice at first a few windows that we'll try to explain here. Up here in our top right, where you'll see my mouse, or we'll just point right here, is our send button. And when we have everything set up and ready, this is the button we use to send, just like sending an email, we send a message out to the LED sign out front. It's because of the wireless Bluetooth transmitter. It's very important to make sure we have a good line of sight with your sign outdoors, that your PC or laptop is very close, within less than 100 feet, and you're not blocked by any large cinder walls. Down here, you notice right here, we have our large preview window. This lets us see what will appear on the LED sign and lets us preview it to make sure we have everything lined up just right before we upload it out to the sign. And up here you'll see some familiar looking buttons. Play, stop, text tool. This is a wait tool for controlling pauses and breaks in the animation if we want it to speed up or slow down. We have a time button over here that we can use for setting up schedules and controlling what time of day or day of week we have a scale button for re uh, controlling sizes. We have, of course, a table button, and that also helps with formatting. But today we're going to keep it pretty simple. We're not going to get into really complicated tools because there's just some basic things we want to do. We do have a movie button right here for uploading videos and animations, and we will show you how to do that. And of course, over here is a bright button, a little light bulb, which represents the brightness of the LED screen, the LED sign, I should say, outside. In this main window here is our contents description window, which functions a lot like a playlist in iTunes. Here we can cut, paste, organize, and shuffle our different text, graphics, and other animations in a pre-built playlist. Over here to the right, up here we have the action group window, which lets us choose motions, movements, transitions, and other effects. And then down here the action item lets us pick specific movements. Let's say, for example, we chose move, left, and so on. But we won't get to that right away. First, let's create some text. This is the basic function. We clicked on our text button, and we get this little dialog box. Now up here, we have a typing window, the blue window. And down here, in this black window, is a preview window, which lets us show it, which lets us test what text we're typing in. So let's first just type up some sample, inf sample text. So because we're a chicken restaurant, a Popeye specifically, we're going to type in Popeye's chicken hot and spicy. Now here we have three lines of text. Now over here on the right hand side, right about here, is a little preview button we can click on to test it. And so here down here in the preview button, it shows us with this white grid. And the white grid helps us figure out framing and sizing and how it will fit on, on the eventual LED screen. And so far, this looks pretty good. Now, we're going to select the text. Now, up here at the top of our text window are some handy little items that look a lot like Microsoft Word. We can choose our font. We can choose size. Let's go from an 8 to a 9, for example. We can choose highlight, background colors, bold, underline, italic, and a few different options. We can make it left justified in the paragraph, or center, or right justified. And then here in the right-hand corner, upper right corner here, we have some vertical spacings and some horizontal scaling and squishings. These things let us decide how much space we want it to make sure that it fits within the grid. I'm going to click on Preview. Now the text is a little bit bigger in that bottom preview window. Well, let's make it a little bit bigger just to see how much we can get away with. We'll bring it up, oh, to maybe a size 12. And let's click OK. Now you notice here in our contents description window, we have a new line item, which is the text layer we just created. Created with the Popeye's chicken and then those items. Now we've clicked on this little red dot next to move in the action group. 
select, which allows us to select a motion. Then we're going to go down here to the green dot next to the left. We're going to double click on that. Now, one small problem, of course, is that it put it on top of the text item. Now we want to change that. We need to cut, and then we're going to paste. And that's just using the right mouse button on your mouse. And be sure to save a lot. In fact, you'll notice here we have some quick buttons here on the left. New, open, save, cut, copy, paste, print, about. These buttons are quick shortcuts, but of course it's just good old file, save as. And now we're going to save this to our desktop. And we'll just call it Popeye's Test. And we'll want to do a Control S save function as often as possible to make sure, just in case Windows 7 decides to crash on us and give us a hard time, we always have our file saved. Now that we have the Popeye's text and a left motion set up, let's click on play to see how it looks in the preview window here. And right away we can see it's not working. Something is wrong. Aha! Now it is working. Okay. So here we can see the basic text. It maybe just takes a moment to get up and running. And so this, it's a very basic right to left motion, but it's enough to do a few basic things. Now let's decide here. We want to go in and see what else we can update. Let's say maybe when we want to give it italic, give it some extra emphasis. We clicked on the little I button, we click on preview. Now it's got a little bit of an indent to it. Now let's say, you know, this height, this text we've selected, let's say we want to change the background color to red, because after all, it's fried chicken, it's hot and red. Now we have that red-blue mix, so let's also switch this to red as well. Click Preview. Uh-huh. So now that looks good. So now we have more of a red theme. We'll click OK so it matches the ketchup with the french fries. And now it kind of switches over there. Popeye's Chicken Hot and Spicy. Now let's say we want to do a promotion. We're going to have a new price special. First we're going to select the text layer, right-click Copy, then click Empty, and down here Paste. So now we've duplicated our text layer we have an identical one here. Now this time we're going to do a daily special. 20 hot wings only $9.95 limited time. A new daily promotion. We're going to click on preview to make sure everything fits just fine. And remember we can use our font and our different sizing options here if we want to make sure that all fits neatly within this red box. We're going to click OK. Now, let's see, you know, instead of just moving right to left, let's try something a little bit different. Let's see here, what can we do here? How about enlarge? We clicked on, under the action group, we clicked on enlarge. You can see the action items have changed. So, let's say action center. Now, we want to make sure, we're going to have to do a cut and paste to make sure that the text stays above. It's first text layer first, then the motion or transition. Remember to control S to save our work. So we have those, now let's click play. Aha! Uh -huh. We have the right to left, and then we also have that center animation right there. Not bad. Not bad at all. Still a little bit basic, but for if we want something that can be easily edited and changed several times a day, this is pretty simple, because we can just double click on the text layer, go in and edit some new items. Now, you can see that our contents description window here in the center has lots of room for vertical items to add in a lot more stuff, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. For one thing, we don't want to have too many items in here because it might clog up and you know cause the machine to crash or whatever. And since it's a wireless transmission, we want to be a little bit conservative. But, you know, let's, let's just do a third item just to be safe. So we're going to copy and paste this one. And now let's say 20 hot wings. But not everyone wants to eat hot wings all the time. So we're going to say family meal deal. And let's say only $14.95. Limited time. Let's do a preview. Okay, so they look like they do kind of fit, although the, the letter L 
gets cut off a little bit on the right hand side, but that's not a big problem. We're going to select, really it's only the top line of text we need to select here. So we're just going to select the top line. Now going over to the right hand side, the upper right, and we see this little letter T add a little space we can put in there. We're going to select it and let's say we type in out how to make it all fit inside and we can use these formatting tools in the upper right or the top to make sure that everything fits in just right. Well now we're pretty happy with it so we'll click on the OK button in the bottom right here and so now that we have that established let's give it some new motions and animations. So we'll click on let's try transitions which is up here in the action group window and down here we have a couple different options. So let's just double click on that and once again we want to make sure that the text is always on top do a control S to make sure everything is saved now let's do a preview play and that transition looks very nice one small problem though that family meal deal flashes on and off so fast we can't really make it out so we're going to click on the wait button up here at the top of the screen. Now that says, oh let's say three seconds, that might be enough time to read that. And then we're going to do a cut and paste to make sure it's above the action exposure. Let's click play, see how that looks. And so now we have some more pauses in there we can add we can use the wait tool to add little pauses in between to make sure that all the text is easy to read. Now let's click stop. Now we're going to move on to the next. So to add a movie to our playlist, we're going to click on the movie button in the top row of our screen. We have this dialog box and we are going to click on video editor, the button right here, which will open up this dialog box. This allows us to import some custom made video clips that are specifically made for this resolution. We'll do file import. This will open up a dialog box and we'll scroll down to a pre-built animation. Now you can contact me about building one for you and in this case we have a specific Popeyes animation we're going to use for this exercise. Now this box here represents the size resolution. There's a special icon down here that we want to click on it. Xbox. A little box with an X in it and that is to make sure that everything is cropped and framed just correctly. We want to double check our export format. This is the sign resolution. In this case it's 128 pixels wide and 64 pixels tall. The frame ratio down here, or the frames per second, allows us to control the playback speed. 30 frames, 16 frames, and so forth. The lower the number, the slower it will play. This allows us to make sure that it can be easily read. Then we'll click OK. Now I've got to click on Edit and Replace. This makes it play through just once to run through to make sure that everything plays correctly. You will also notice at the bottom of the screen here we do have some familiar, familiar looking buttons like Play, Pause, Stop, Forward, Reverse, and so on. And these are to help us figure out the playback speeds or if we want to isolate specific portions of an animation. And of course there's a little slider here that we can pull on just to advance to look through the animation. Now that we've set that all up, we're going to do File Export, which is Control S. And we'll just make this Popeyes test. That has been saved, so now we can close that. And we can see in this little line here, a confirmation is now a .ymv file. And we'll click OK. So now it's at the bottom of our playlist here. We're going to do Control S to save our work. Press play to check through everything and make sure that everything plays through all right. And so far this looks pretty good. We have animated text, we have our animated video with our much more elaborate animated graphics text and our big logos and our juicy looking fried chicken on the screen so everything looks pretty good. We'll click stop. Now comes the tricky part. We're going to click on board and our pull down menu here board and connect. Now this is where we want to make sure that the Bluetooth uh, transmitter is plugged in. We are selecting a COM16 and our baud rate down here is 11 
5200 or 115200. That is to make sure that the connections and everything are, are correct. Put a click OK. And so now you'll notice the send button in the upper right corner of our software screen is no longer grayed out. So we're now going to click send since we now have that option. And we're going to wait for a little progress bar to go through. Everything looks correct. So now we're going to click on send in the bottom left corner of this dialog. And now we can see a progress bar moving. Depending on how much material, how many graphics and text and animations are in this set of instructions we're sending, it'll take a little bit longer. In this case, uh, it may take about, oh, 10 or 15 minutes. So just like those old cooking shows, set it and forget it. In a few minutes, we'll be able to review and see how it looks. And voila, here we have our completed sign animation right here, as you can see. It cycles through first our pre-built animation we loaded in using the video editor. And then we have our text layers. And the great thing is these animated text animations that you see on screen can be changed and edited in just a few minutes. And that is really where one of the, the great advantages of ITV comes into play, that you can update and change your LED sign animations whenever you want throughout the day, depending on your business and your business needs. To learn more, visit ledcrafting.com. And we hope this video has been helpful with helping you learn your new ITV software. And contact us with any further questions about how to make the most out of your...